Hello everyone, Felix from Nintendo Life here, and today we're here to review a very special game, it's It Takes Two on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was written by the wonderful Roland Ingram and converted into video by me. Marriage isn't always perfect. Sometimes, as here, two presumably decent, hard-working parents, whose relationship you know nothing about and whom you can only afford the most general human empathy, find the joy of matrimony fades. So they must support their daughter as they carefully share the decision to separate. However, in It Takes Two, the capital T talk doesn't exactly go to plan, as Dad and Mum, Cody and Mary, are promptly shrunk into small handcrafted dolls by the magic tears of their crying daughter, whom we can only presume is a witch. Nonetheless, they seem inclined to return to her rather than flee, and so begin an adventure from shed to garden to house. Following the Gamersphere cheering and clapping last year, Game of the Year this, Revolutionary that, It Takes Two has landed on Switch with its impressive commitment to co-op gaming. To be clear, there's no real way to play this without a companion. It is essentially an only co-op, there is not a single set piece or puzzle based on solo play. Cody and May are not two people optionally playing in the same space, the spaces are built in every way for their pairing. There's nothing without one another, which of course, rather lends the story. Anyway, the meat and potatoes here served at your table for two is vibrant, solid, creative platforming. The jump feel is rewarding and extremely generous. A double jump can be followed by a forward dash, effectively making for a triple jump that covers very long gaps and saves misjudgment. Coyote time is helpful without losing the smoothness of dropping from a ledge, and a sticky wall jump lets you basically spidey onto stuff as well as recover quite badly missed leaps. With this last point for example, a level may ask your partner to race about, moving platforms or clearing obstacles while you slowly itch down a wall you've stuck to, and then kick off to whatever safety that has or haven't been achieved. Imperiling yourself in faith that your friend will be there creates a true bond. The kind of bond that most hilariously breaks by slamming an iron vice onto a gullible idiot. Respawn is instant and unlimited, inviting to this kind of larking about all times. It's fun, it's playful, it's murderous. A variety of gadgets are handed out in patient stretching cutscenes by a salacious talking book that your daughter ought not to be reading, which or no which. Neither gadget is too powerful for its owner hammerhead with no nails, or some flammable gel with nothing to ignite. But together you're equipped to make a surprisingly visceral, violent progress. No spoilers, but the boss fights are… just wonderful. The ever present need to cooperate goes as far as agreeing that the cutscenes are too long and skipping them by both holding A at the same time. It takes two, and in all fairness it's hinted at by the title, does indeed take two. Sitting on the sofa with a full controller each, sharing a nice big telly, the core play experience makes perfect sense. However, of Switch's three models, the OLED is for handheld enthusiasts, the Switch Lite is for handheld exclusivists, and even standard model players are at least handheld curious. So are Hazel Light and EA cut off from a major chunk of Switch owners with this two-player game? Well, thankfully the same options are provided here as on other consoles. You can play online with a friend whether they have the game or not, which is nice, although the friend pass was not live for testing during our review. Or you can turn on local Wi-Fi across two switches. The fly in the ointment for online play remains Nintendo's voice chat non-solution. Not great for a game that is so dependent on communications, but you can improvise for example with Discord. We tested online and local co-op and found the experience mostly solid. A couple of drops from the server in several hours online didn't lose us much progress. But the switch use of ways to play is of course tabletop mode, holding a joy-con pair each and huddling round the kickstart screen. With the switch so bare on the table, the fact that the slender wireless slab was able to pump out two play windows smoothly was all the more pleasing. 
Squashy resolutions, gunchy models, assets popping in cutscenes, none of it was going to bother us on our tiny split screen. We had tons of fun. And those graphical compromises are indeed here. This game looks like what it is, a Switch port from a game from 2021. However, the frame rate was actually much better than we initially thought. Much of the fun of It Takes Two is happening in the room and not in the game, so the Switch version delivers everything it needs to. In summary, Hazelight just decided that gameplay triumphs, well, prettiness. But putting these graphics aside, the audio in It Takes Two is fantastic. The sound design is rich and whimsical, not presenting any obvious corner cutting in quality for the sake of Nintendo's hardware. Meanwhile, we get a musical score grinning with cinematic prestige, nodding enthusiastically at Danny Elfman and Johnny Williams. Footsteps and voices reverberate through vacuum cleaner pipes, and shouts get blown away as you soar through winds on a hangpan's glider. The fun of your gadgets is garnished by silly but nicely produced thuds and bonks to extra irritate anyone on the accidentally receiving end. In conclusion, if you were even half aware of games news at the end of 2021, you were already a bit interested in this game. It's brimming with fun, uniquely committed to co-op gaming, plays solidly and distinctly, and usually discards one cool idea in favour of another before there's time to get bored. It Takes Two and the good old Switch may not be a perfect marriage, but it's probably worth sticking out since we're now five years in. We here at Nintendo Life give It Takes Two on the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. And now with the review done, it's time for Felix's personal thoughts. Now, a thing not mentioned in the review are the mini-games. We have everything from Rackamel to who can press a button quickest to make the other one fall in a pit. This is just a really nice change of pace because you're always working together and suddenly you get to battle it all out. I myself played this with my fiancé and it's safe to say that it's definitely one of my most enjoyable parts of the game. Now, the game might look okay in tabletop, but when you put it on a big TV screen, Man, does it look rough. I can understand that Roland didn't like the cutscenes because they just don't look very good. It's a shame, because when we played it on Xbox, the cutscenes were just one of my favorite aspects. They looked gorgeous and it had some really nice character building. I could best describe this port as compared to The Witcher 3. Now, It Takes Two is not nearly as big, but I think it's much bigger than people actually realize. You enter new areas, new mechanics, and there's so much happening on screen and that the frame rate almost never drops, well, that's just an achievement in its own. They have, of course, needed to sacrifice the graphics just like Witcher 3, but then you can play it on this tiny little tablet. It's just a giant victory. And that was my thoughts. If you like this video, why don't you team up with another person and click that subscribe button. And don't forget to check out our website, nintendolive.com, for all sorts of Nintendo-related content. Stay safe, play some co-op games together, and I'll see you in the next one. Felix from Nintendo Life, out. Oh, what?